I'm, I've, I've had a dual life, a dual career, and I've been very fortunate to have a dual career as a biomedical engineer and chemical engineer, and also a career as an orthopedic surgeon. And I've had the opportunity to meld that in the work that we're doing in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of musculoskeletal work. Um, we've recently uh, uh, described a new term for what we believe to be a new field, which is regenerative engineering, which combines sort of the new things going on in terms of the world of tissue engineering at the next level. New th you know, the new areas of advanced materials, new areas of stem cell work, and new areas of developmental biology, which really hasn't played a great role in engineering of tissues, and I think it's going to play an important role in the future. Uh, and we've been applying that for musculoskeletal regeneration, and I think that um, one of the advantages is the fact that since I am a practicing clinician as well as an engineer, the ability to be able to bridge that, I think, in terms of knowing what the clinical problems are on a day-to-day -day basis has been helpful. Um, so it's been, it's, been a, it's been great, and I've, I've been also very, very, uh, uh, I've been delighted to see the, the response I've, I have had from my biomedical engineering and chemical engineering colleagues and uh, understanding the, the, the clinical background that I have, and I think that they've really embraced that in terms of my colleagues and collaboration and, and working on different projects. Why we've called it regenerative engineering is that there's a, there's a school of thought where the, the, that talks about regenerative medicine, but in many quarters that's actually, you know, refers to stem cells and stem cell science. Um, a school of thought that talks about tissue engineering, um, uh, but we believe that the future is really l having a holistic r approach to these areas, and so we call this, we term this field regenerative engineering to really look at the best areas of material science, biological factors, the best areas of uh, stem cell science, and the best areas of developmental biology. And um, we're thinking about grand challenges. We're thinking about the next 25 years and what the grand challenges can be. And um, I think, at least in terms of our group, our big grand challenge is how do we regenerate large tissues? How do we regenerate limbs, uh, uh, joints? Um, I was recently honored last week to receive the NIH Pioneer Award. Um, and the Pioneer Award is geared toward, um, at least the one that I have, is geared toward the regeneration of large tissues and joints. And I remember you know, providing my presentation to the Pioneer Committee about what I wanted to do and, um, and made my case for how we now have the tools through this new field of regenerative engineering to make this happen. And we, you know, I, you know, we had a very good response to that. So uh, I think people should be very, very excited about the, the possibility of being able to regenerate in the next generation, regenerate large tissues such as joints, um, limbs. Um, but also in my work, in, in my field as an engineer, but also a physician, I get a lot of calls from from people every day who may have everyday injuries, loss of a digit, loss of a finger, uh, and they're looking for solutions that, uh, that can come uh, to regenerate uh, even uh, digits and, and, and fingers. And uh, I think this provides, uh, the, the regenerative engineering paradigm provides great possibilities for, for being able to regenerate those tissues too. Well, it was an extraordinary honor. As you know, AMB is really the premier organization in medical and biological engineering, and the Galetti Award is the highest award. Um, I never met P uh, Pierre Galetti, but I, I knew of his, uh, his great work and research, but also I knew of his great work as a, an advocacy, and I, I like the fact that the award is named after someone who was so prominent in both, um, in both research and also in advocacy. Uh, I've always had a philosophy that it's important for one to give back, and, and another way of, of thinking about it is to pay forward uh, for the, the types of uh, advantages that we have being here in America as Americans, and also have the great, great fortune of being able to work uh, in the profession that we do. And so um, I've worked to try to, to work in a number of different, uh, number of different uh, venues and situations where, we can, where I can pay forward in terms of our country and uh, working with NIH, NSF, the different uh, types of organizations, and also now with the National Academies on a number of different areas. And I think this is in the tradition of uh, Pierre Galetti. Well, I think that the, some of the biggest problems are obviously number one that there's a the pie and the pot for funding is actually shrinking, and and uh, America has to really continue to understand and that that our competitiveness is really dependent upon our ability to think and innovate, and that innovation is uh, because coming more and more rapidly throughout the world, and we are in a globally competitive environment, um, and so I think under understanding that global competitiveness and the fact that innovation is what really drives prosperity for America along with uh, 
the other areas, uh, di our diversity here, uh, the fact that we have a free market economy, uh, and the fact that we have a, a great you know, democratic republic. These are the drivers of our, of, our, of our greatness. And so understanding that that innovation comes at a financial cost is going to be very, very, is very, very important in terms of, in terms of advocating for the future.